We've just got back from the Disney Fantasy where we were lucky enough to spend seven days cruising the Western Caribbean out of Port Canaveral. In this video we'll hit all the public areas of the ship from the pools at the top to the restaurants at the bottom. And be sure to stick around to the end because we're covering those main dining rooms last. The Disney Fantasy was built in 2012 and is the sister ship to the Disney Dream. We're going to start on deck 13 at the forward end of the ship. Here you will find the adult only spaces starting with the Currents Bar. And further forward on deck 13, the Satellite Falls Sun Deck. These are really good spaces if you're traveling child free or your children are in the kids club. Some of the best adult only areas we've come across on any ship. The Fantasy also has excellent adult only inside venues, but more on that later. Here on deck 13 forward you will also find the concierge sun deck, which is only accessible to those guests staying concierge. Edge, the club for children aged 11 to 14 is located on this deck. Moving down to deck 12 you will find the concierge lounge and also great outside spaces that run along the length of the ship, looking down onto the main pool deck below. There were always plenty of sunbeds available up here on our cruise and it is also a great spot to watch the sail away party or the pirate show. There is also a quieter family area with a small wading pool. This is great if you want to get away from the main pool deck which can be a bit noisy. Deck 12 is also home to the infamous aqueduct. This is a really great water ride, which we all enjoyed. Top tip, pack your swim shorts in your hand luggage and go to the aqueduct on the embarkation day, as there's no line. Our son rode three times back to back. There are cubby holes near the aqueduct entrance to store your shoes and belongings. Just past there, you will also find the aqua lab for children aged three and older. From here, we go back up to deck 13 again, this time aft. Here you will find the sports deck. Early in the morning, passengers were doing yoga up here, which looked fantastic. You can play soccer, basketball, pickleball, anything with a ball. Speaking of balls, this is also where you will find Goofy's mini golf. Our boys used to come up and play while we were getting ready to go for dinner. It's complimentary, it's great fun, and we used it much more than we thought we would. The virtual sports simulators are also on this deck. We are now at the back of the ship, and from here you can take the stairs down to the adult-only speciality restaurants, Palo and Remy. Located on deck 12, you are instantly made aware that you are in an adult area as the theming takes on a more sophisticated air and the decor is more to an adult's taste. Meridian is an adult-only bar situated between the two restaurants and it was here that we started a tour of the ship on a sea day titled Art of a Theme. This free tour lasts about 45 minutes and a cast member talks you through certain details that you might not notice, including hunting for hidden mickeys. A huge shout out to cast member Tarek from the UK, who was a fantastic tour guide. Have you done the tour? Let us know in the comments below. As you come out of Meridian and turn left, you come to the French restaurant Remy. Taking themes from the movie Ratatouille, there are some fabulous details here and a fabulous wine list. In Ratatouille, food critic Anton Ego asks for a bottle of Cheval Blanc 1947 
and the Disney Imagineers wasted no time in finding a handful of bottles for the fantasy and the dream, of which I believe only four were bought as they cost $25,000 each, two for the dream and two for the fantasy. At the time of recording, one bottle has been sold. Sadly, not to us. Across from Remy, on the other side of the Meridian Bar, is the Italian restaurant Palo. This is a hugely popular restaurant. And every seat looks out to the ocean. They have great views. Italian in cuisine and theming, Palo is the Italian word used to describe the poles the gondolas in Venice are tied to, this is evident in the colour scheme. This huge chandelier is made from Venetian Murano glass and is meant to resemble spaghetti and meatballs. We visited Venice in the summer and had a marvellous time. Check out our trip report on Venice. We'll leave a link in the description down below, as well as in the upper right hand corner of your screen if you don't want to wait. We must point out this picture on the staircase leading up to Paolo and Remy. This wonderful painting depicts Remy and Emil looking out onto the Paris skyline. Now if you look closely, you'll see a couple of details that the Imagineers added. Just behind the Eiffel Tower, you can see Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland Paris. And in the bottom right corner, you can make out the shadows of Walt and Mickey, what is known as the partner's image. It's the little touches like that that make Disney so very special. Down from the painting on deck 11, you have the back entrance to the Fantasy's Restaurant Cabanas. There's another entrance as well, closer to Midship, and that's where we're going to start our tour of the buffet. But before you even enter Cabana's Buffet, you are met by Sweet On You, where you can buy specialty desserts and fancy ice creams. Now, we don't usually pay extra for these sorts of things when we cruise. However, they looked so good, and as we were on for Halloween, we just couldn't resist. So glad we did, they were delicious. Sweet on You's exit leaves you right at the top of Cabanas. Serving breakfast and lunch, this is a popular venue, although we wished it was open longer in the day as the buffets are on other cruise lines. This is the only real negative we found regarding the food and dining on board. There is an outside eating area at the back of Cabanas, which is used a lot, and you can also take your food outside to the main pool deck, where there are lots of tables. The only day it got really crowded in our experience was on Embarkation Day, when we gave up and went to the quick service station at the other end of the pool deck. Heading out of Cabanas past Sweet On You, you'll find Nemo's Reef, another water play area for children. This is an extremely popular space with lots going on. And this opens out onto the main pool deck and family area. In the middle of deck 11, you have the two main family pools, Mickey's Pool and Donald's Family Pool. There is also Mickey's Slide for children age 14 and under. Both Mickey's Pool and Donald's Family Pool are covered over to create a floor when shows are on such as The Pirate Show or Sail Away. Films are shown consistently throughout the day on the Funnel Vision. This screen is also used to enhance the Sail Away and Pirate Night events. As you head forward, you pass the drink stations. This is where you can get the free sodas, teas and coffees included in your cruise fare.
Walking further forward, you will reach the quick service food stations on the Disney Fantasy, all themed towards the Cars franchise. We found these really good, and there's a great choice of pizza, burgers, salads, wraps, and sandwiches. Because there are three different stations serving three different things, the lines move really quickly. On the opposite side of the deck, you will find the soft serve ice cream. And frozen drinks area, which also sells Dole Whip, with or without alcohol. Beyond this point are the adult only Quiet Cove Pool. and Cove Cafe. The Cove Cafe does specialty coffees and there are always complimentary pastries on offer. If you can't leave the kids, don't worry. The Vista Cafe on deck four also does specialty coffee and has the same pastries on offer as well. The Senses Spa and Gym is also situated on this level, at the very front of the ship. Decks 7 to 10 are stateroom only decks, so we will next pick up our tour at the front of deck 5, where you will find the Vibe Teens Club. While there is an accessible entrance on deck 5, the main entrance to Vibe is via a staircase off the deck 4 promenade walkway. I guess this is to avoid disturbing cabins when they leave late at night. We hope this video is some use to you if you're considering booking on the Fantasy, if you've already booked and want to get excited, or you've sailed on her before and you want to reminisce on the fantastic time you had. If it is, please consider subscribing to our channel, Travelling with Teens, so you don't miss the rest of this series on board the Disney Fantasy. This space has to be one of the best teen-only spaces we've ever seen on any ship. Moving along Deck 5, you come to the upper level of the Buena Vista Theatre, which shows current Disney movies throughout the cruise. It is also used as a meeting point for excursions. As you move further along, you will find the Port Adventures desk where you can book shore excursions. And the Midship Detective Agency. This is a really fun interactive game that takes you all over the ship hunting for clues. We did this on our last sea day and really enjoyed it. This area gives you a really great view of the atrium below, and we watched many activities from here, including Jack Jack's Diaper Dash. If you don't know what this is, then book a Disney cruise to find out. Trust me, it will be worth it. Or you can just check back in a few weeks where I'm going to cover Jack Jack's Diaper Dash in detail. It almost deserves its own video. You will also find the Bibbity Bobbity Boutique across the atrium space on this deck. If you are unfamiliar with the Bibbity Bobbity Boutique, this is where young princes and princesses can go to be transformed into their favourite character princess or dressed up as Captain Mickey or a knight. It's really quite magical, but it is quite expensive, although there are different price points, so you can 
take your own outfit if needed. Further down the corridor you come to the It's a Small World Nursery. And the Oceaneer Club and Lab. As you would imagine with Disney, these are first class. They're impeccably run and there are continuous activities for children throughout the cruise. There are even open house times for everyone to visit these areas, with or without children. And I even got to meet one of my favorite heroes there. At the very end of this corridor, you come to Pepe's door. That's Pepe the Prawn from The Muppets. This is part of the Midship Detective Agency activity and super cute. We didn't do it, but Tarek, on our Art of the Theme tour, said to call the number on the door. I imagine this is from your stateroom phone. Let us know in the comments below if you've done this and what happens. Tucked away towards the front of Deck 5, you will find the passenger laundry. There are also laundry facilities for passengers on Decks 2, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. We head now to Deck 4 and to the very back of the ship where you'll find the stairs down to the adult-only Europa area. This consists of the Skyline Bar, which changes Skyline Vistas to different cities every 12 minutes, the Tube, themed after the London Underground, Ogill's Pub. These areas are used for some family events during the day, for example craft activities and a silent disco took place in the tube. In the evening these are strictly adult only and they will ask to check key to the world cards of young looking guests. From this area past some of the best restrooms we have ever seen and inspired by the architecture of Antonio Gaudi You arrive at La Piazza. This is adult only later in the evening, but will allow children in before 9 p.m. The adult only space Ooh La La is just off La Piazza. There is live music here in the evenings. The central bar here has a carousel theme inspired by Walt's love of carousels. As you leave the adult only areas, the music changes from more adult background music to familiar Disney tunes. There is even a crossover area where there is no music. The carpet and the theming tells you that you are now back in family-friendly areas. On your right is D-Lounge. This is used for day and evening activities.
Next door to D Lounge is the Carriage Jewels Shop. As you arrive back at the atrium, you will find shutters. This is where you can look at and purchase photos that have been taken during your cruise. Again, there is an excellent view of the lobby from here and there are often characters around for meet and greets. We had some great encounters with characters in this area. Looking down over the atrium, in one corner of the space, you will find the Vista Cafe, serving speciality coffees as we mentioned before. Here there's also an area for DVC, which is the Disney Vacation Club. Members and future members. Heading out of the doors, you come to the promenade deck, or the walking slash running track aboard the Fantasy. This goes the whole way around the ship, and is a great way to burn off those Mickey churro waffles from Cabanas. This deck has a real old school cruising vibe. There are steamer chairs to relax in, and you can partake in a game of shuffleboard if the mood takes you. Now jumping down to deck three midship, we see the main atrium from ground level in all its glory. The Imagineers used forced perspective when designing this area, just as they do in the parks, to make everything seem taller and grander to the human eye. Going forward from here, you pass the Bon Voyage Bar. Which leads to the main shopping area on board. And there's plenty of Disney Cruise Line themed items. jewelry, and much more. At the end of the shopping area you come to the Walt Disney Theatre. This is where you will watch the spectacular production shows on board. Definitely a highlight of the cruise. Leaving the theatre and heading back midship on deck three, you pass guest services and another DVC desk for Disney Vacation Club members, both of which lead into the atrium. The atrium is the main hub of the ship, and it's the area you walk into when you first arrive on embarkation day, and they announce your arrival. This is also the main entrance for the Royal Court restaurant one of three themed restaurants that make up the rotational dining on the Fantasy. A corridor to the right of the Royal Court takes you alongside the restaurant. And there is a second quieter entrance here. Further down you come to the second rotational dining room, Animator's Palette. Animator's Palette is a fantastic space. And the attention to detail is amazing. The 
food isn't bad either. Heading down a staircase to deck two, you will find the final restaurant. The Enchanted Garden. This is really atmospheric and a nice contrast to Animator's palette. You will even see the ceiling change throughout the night as the flowers slowly open with the change in lighting. We will be covering all the restaurants and what we ate in a future vlog. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be the first to know when that vlog drops. And that's it! Our journey around the public areas on board the Disney Fantasy. We hope you enjoyed it and see you real soon.